he had me muted. That's what he did. He thought he was being cute and cheeky. He was being stupid. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. So let's talk about this new EV truck of yours. Mm-hmm. Who's going to work on it when it breaks down? Uh, I can. Fully capable of doing that. I'm it's sure a major you can, battery man. pack, or unless I don't know, you don't have service information or parts availability, or anybody even knows what the hell you're talking about when you say, "Oh, look, I got a Rivian." Oops. I mean, the same thing was true of Tesla. We fixed yeah, those for years so without service info. Who? Seth Thorson. Uh, no, no, he had to buy one and, and disassemble it. Yeah, it. Okay, well, nobody else is doing that. Are you going to disassemble your Rivian? Nobody already had one for like. Almost a year now, so if I need to get advice, I always can from him. But he's had thing. one for a year. Mm-hmm. He doesn't talk about it that much. No, he didn't say anything today. Yeah, that's he's ashamed of him. He talks about the <laughs> Tesla constantly. <laughs> it's because the Tesla brings him money. I know, right? <laughs> oh, the Rivian's just so reliable; it hasn't broken down yet. It's great. Uh, he's only had issues with his powered tonneau cover. I have the the SUV, so I don't have no. that. That's Do you nice. like That's it? Cool. I really like it. He's been getting yammer about this whole time, talking about how great he is. And great it is. I've not heard him say anything. Feet. That's because you've been like in your bubble. <laughs> no, it's because some. You talk a lot. That's what he's trying yes, to say. Yes, exactly. You know what we got today on the YouTube channel? Somebody goes, <laughs> I, I'm trying to listen to you guys keep interjecting and going off on these tangents and ad hoc comments. And <laughs> I can't even listen. This is unlistenable. <laughs> Are they not listening to the podcast? Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> that's what I was recommending. I'm like, dude, that's the show. What are you talking about? This is the entirety of it. This is and always has been. And it always has been. It always has been. I mean, we I don't I don't we think had some I, serious episodes. I, I think if the guest didn't get it and we, we were going to offend them, I, I tended to just mute myself the whole time. Yeah, there uh, were episodes where you were really quiet. Oh, yeah. If I pissed him off <laughs> at any point during the week, I was carrying it by myself. <laughs> okay? And he would just sit there and he wouldn't say a word. Or That, that was maybe one episode. Or he would get super quiet. And you'd you'd be like sending him text messages, and he's falling asleep at this point. He's just no. Like, oh. There were some that was like, dude, I don't want to do this. Why'd you why'd you book this person? This is awful. And it was it was mostly because like we're not going to be able to talk about stupid stuff like Rivian trucks. <laughs> 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 no, actually, I'm super jelly. Those they look cool as hell. They really do. If I could afford one, which I can't, congrats on being able to afford one. If I could afford one, <laughs> I would totally buy a Lucid. I would buy one today. Those they are yeah, beautiful I probably would too. I probably would too. I, I, don't, I don't know why. I'm just there, there's several of them in Kansas City, and every time I see one, I'm like, ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, I have the luck of uh, knowing a pretty well known YouTuber, so I get to see lots of uh, vehicles. So I've seen who's the YouTuber. Uh, Do we Kyle, know? Yeah, uh, it's Kyle Connor, uh, out of spec reviews. Um, I don't know. Mm. He does basically everything EV. That's what he, Isn't he the one that has the, um, uh, does he have a Hummer? No, but he, uh, I got to see that truck. Oh, nice. Yeah. Does he just come by and show them to you? No. So my brother-in-law, um, because my wife's, sister is um anyways long story but uh my brother-in-law runs a high-end detail shop okay and so kyle uses that detail shop to oh, okay. take care of his fleet sure and right. so he always brings them there for like they do um like quality build um mm-hmm. series and like um any fit and finish issues and all stuff like that so i get to see the cars there Very and cool. go for rides and stuff like that and that's actually how i saw the rivian a year ago okay after i I'd, I'd already put down a deposit because my friends that work there and it was refundable so what do you um what do you like most about it um it can do pretty much everything so it can go off-roading like a jeep stock jeep right Modified's a different story um it's as fast as a porsche it can handle as good as a Porsche. 
if you don't have the all-terrain tires. I mean, yeah. for an SUV, that's 8,000 pounds. Right. It's yeah. 8,000 pounds? Yeah, which also means you probably could buy it if you have about, if you want to take the tax write off through the business. The business can't afford that nonsense. What are you talking about? That's cute. <laughs> he thinks I make money. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a hey. section 179. It's 50% of uh, yeah. purchase price. Yeah. yeah. Really? Plus, what was the purchase price? Uh, 81. Five. That's rude. You can't ask that. I just did. That. I know. It's rude, though. Hey, how much did you pay for your house? See? Mm, was that that's, rude? I mean, it's Colorado, so yeah. uh, about a half million. <laughs> <laughs> is it the Californians that they ruin it? Uh, <laughs> that in Texas, yeah. Basically. The Texans moved up here. Oh yeah, because of oil, oil and well, gas. Uh, yeah. So there was a what they Big. found a whole bunch oh, of oil yeah. here, and yeah. they went bananas. Mm-hmm. But then, but then oil was cheap. It was nineteen dollars a barrel. It yeah, went it, negative for a while. It did. Yeah, I'm that. That was weird because, um, you know, the market went like really yeah. fast. And then but the, then, like, I don't know, six months later, it went. Well, right yeah, back. the election happened. <laughs> Pretty much. That was rude, David. <laughs> what? You're talking about politics. <laughs> I have a friend who lives in West Texas, and she was telling me that when gas hit or when the crude hit $100 a barrel, uh, what 10 years ago or whatever the first time it was like it was really spiking she said that the, the all of a sudden this little town of a thousand people turned into a town of a hundred thousand and it was mm-hmm. all people coming in for oil and all of the support and the infrastructure and yada 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 and then when when gas came back down or the crude came back down she's like it's all a ghost town now yeah. and like this all like half built apartment complexes and yeah and this that and the other that is a freaking hard job. Those dudes that do that job. The pump crude? It yeah. is crazy. They, I mean, they make Rough great mix. money, but uh, yeah, they're yeah. also working usually 60 to 80 hours. If sure. not more than that. Yeah. And it is a, it, like we talk about auto repair being physically demanding. That's a whole different level of physically yeah. demanding. Yeah, That's yeah. So right. are these, that they come in and they stayed because crude's. Yeah, so uh, in we have uh, where I live um, and where the shop is. Um, it's lots of there's lots of ag support, so it's pretty steady. Even when we get these big booms, um, and then because of all the tech sectors in Boulder, Fort Collins, Loveland, that's blown up through the moon in the last yeah. couple of years, it's kind of when it's slumped in the oil field, it's just ended up filling up with people that are commuting because they can't afford. Fort Collins, Boulder. It's why all these towns that used to be tiny had blown up like crazy. There's a town next to uh, Fort Collins um, that's called Severance. It used to have like maybe 5,000 people. It's like up to like 30,000 in just a couple of years. Holy cow. It's crazy. And uh, Other than the driving, because Texans are crazy. They drive like psychopaths. Other than that, I mean, I have customers that are Texans and they're cool. I like, I have no problem with Texans. Right. Californians, however. <laughs> I, you know, How many people listen to this podcast that are from California? <laughs> I, I don't, I don't have it's going to be zero here in a minute. Here's the problem. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever we have a problem in the shop, we have a really difficult customer and we're like, man, this person is obnoxious as all get out. We just assume <laughs> they're an import and they almost always are. They talk a certain way. They act a certain way. It is their world and we are just occupying some temporary space in their world and they do not recognize anything else outside of it. Right. Like just, it doesn't exist. Yeah, I, I mean, there's most of reality for everything. That is not a generalization. <laughs> that is an accurate depiction of a overwhelming majority, not the people that listen to this podcast, but everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. 
I, you know what it is? It's it's you weather know, it, and terrain snobbery. That's what it is. I, they I, won the lottery and where they were born in the in in some of the most beautiful country you will ever see. There's a, there's like Colorado's pretty. It it is. It's gorgeous. But you have temperature extremes. And you have temperature ex- extremes. But like the first time me and my wife honeymooned uh Napa Valley. You the first time you were like leaving San Francisco and you're going up in through those mountains and you see these like beautiful rolling hills and it's 70 degrees all the year round and it's sunny. I, I you cannot describe it. Like I saw it for the first time and I'm like I, I need to move here. This is insane. Yep. Then I saw the prices and I said, "Nah." <laughs> yep. I you know, I I do want to make one observation. What's that? It's that all of the things and the people in this world that you hate are I'm very anybody. very similar to you. It's like you hate yourself. It's like Th- all that's true. That part's true. There's a lot of self loathing, but that's not no, I don't hate anybody. I'm just I'm just pointing out how they are. And they are difficult to deal with because you're used to you know, what do you that I'm not doesn't mean that there's hate there. There's no hate. There's no hate. No, no I'm, not, I'm just pointing out. I'm difficult I, I, to deal with because you're I'm difficult not difficult to deal, to deal with. I'm very easygoing. I am very easygoing. I don't like to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so you ask very little of me. It's like, hey, I need you to be at this place. That's a problem. Don't ask me to be somewhere <laughs> or do something. <laughs> Do you understand? I wish, I wish you were joking. Or I'm not joking. Uh, Don't no. ask anything of me. <laughs> I will disappoint you as a lesson to never bother me again. <laughs> I'm just saying that we have we have gotten bombarded with Californians fleeing and they told they turned my beloved county a certain way. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, things are not the way they used to be. And they are progressive now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, in, in everything. Culturally. Taxation. Yeah. I'm sure you appreciated that. I don't. I don't. This is a problem. This <laughs> is a problem. I don't. I don't understand. I don't understand the the logic, the mentality. The I don't. I don't get it. They they leave. No, like, it's just crazy. I can't. We can't live out there. And then they do the same uh, thing. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then they move into your town, and they're like, "Hey, you know what we need to do? We need to give away free money to people, and we need to tax the people that are making the money to do that." That sounds like a good idea. You know, the school administrators in my area gave themselves massive raises because the people that had moved into my area, they believe in education, not just education, because I believe in education to a certain degree. They believe in public education and they believe in heavily funding public education. It's like, okay, that's fine. Whatever. So they pass a a resolution to add to the property taxes and to the sales taxes and because we need more money for the teachers. So the administrators found it appropriate to give themselves 10 plus percent raises due to inflation right after COVID. So these people went from making $175,000 a year to $200,000 plus a year in Kansas flipping city. You are living high on the hog at, that, at those prices. Insane. The administrators. The administrators. They don't teach anything, by the way. They push paper. Right. That's what they do. They push paper. They don't teach my kid. Now none of them teach my kids because they're all insane. So I, now I've got my kids out of the the public schools. So I still pay for it, by the way. I still pay for it because how can you not pay for it? You know who thinks that Californians, they think that they moved into my area. You know, what would have probably not been the case me having to pay for my kids not to attend public school. 
that's probably would have gone away. Probably. But now, no, no. Now I have to move. Now I have to move. Not them. Not the people that listen to the show. They're wonderful. Everybody else, especially transplants, they can screw off. You know where they can go? They can go back to California. Go back to California, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) They may. (laughs) They are not going to. It is insane there. (laughs) They can't. Who can? Look, they cash out on their $800,000 house, which is $60,000 anywhere else in the world. They get out $800,000 and they're like, I'm rich. I can buy a $400,000 mansion in Kansas City and still have $400,000 left over. This is insane. I'm going to have my house scot-free with two acres and a white picket fence. And I can have chickens. I can't have chickens in my Tenth of an acre plot of land on top of each other in California. That was $800,000. You know who else ruined it? Airbnb heirs. People who bought up properties in droves in Kansas City to turn them into Airbnbs. You know what Kansas City did? They said, you can't do this anymore. They banned them. It just rolled out. Hey, we're banning Airbnbs in Kansas City. They're I ruining why. the neighborhoods. They're ruining the neighborhoods. They were they were leasing, they were renting out because you know it turns into a business. You've got to have in order for it to be profitable, at least like eleven days or fifteen days rented out. Otherwise, it's not going to work, right? Mm-hmm. So then they rent it out to whoever, including stupid kids, and the stupid kids blow up the the house with these wild parties, and the neighbors are like, "This is a house." It's not a party house. It's not a hotel. Like It's a house. My kids live here. I don't want any of this nonsense in my neighborhood. So they're complaining to the, to the uh, politicians. Politicians did something. Good for them. You know, I envision him in about 30 years yelling at somebody for driving past his driveway, looking at his lawn, anything, right? Just standing out there. It's like a Frank Tarantino Tur- movie where he's on the porch. Yeah, Exactly. <laughs> Either Grand that or Torino. Mr. Otto. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <laughs> it's either that or Mr. Otto, right? Yeah. Mr. That's, Otto? That's pretty good. I don't get that one. Oh. What is that one? It's yeah. the, the, the Tom Hanks movie. Yeah. You, you oh, know. Otto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that movie's depressing. That movie was depressing. So I didn't watch it. You didn't watch it? I just figured it was too much like you, and I was, <laughs> didn't want to. In the movie, he tries to kill himself over and over and over. He keeps like yeah. not succeeding. Something happens. Of course, the movie, like, it's, oh, it's serendipity, and he meets, and he is, ends up living life, and yada, yada, yada. But throughout the movie, like. I'm sure you can see the commonality of this. That there would be serendipity? No, not that part. <laughs> the, the roof caves in when I try to hang myself. <laughs> It'll be the shop, too. It'll be in the shop. What What was it that you just told me? That your, your fitness health <laughs> David has been exercising. He, I, no, I go to the doctor and they tell me I'm pre-diabetic. And she's like, "Do you want? Do you want a pill? I can give you a pill." And I go, "I don't. I don't want. I don't want your pills." She's like, "I don't figured you'd say that." <laughs> she didn't say that. But she she did offer me pills, and I said, "No, no, no, no. I'll fix this. I can fix this. I can. Fi- I'm, I can fix this." <laughs> so I try to fix it, and I've been trying to fix it. And I've been, I've been like really pushing myself, really pushing. Everything hurts. Everything. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm your constant, arm, your arms, constant all. pain. Yeah. I've had to have surgery. Look, look at that. With that surgery. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Constant pain too. And so I'm thinking, and I, I, so I got a little pedometer here. I count my steps. Mm-hmm. I count my steps, right? I don't, I don't want those monstrosity. I can't deal with that. That's too much. Anyway. It's too much information. It's texting me. I don't I have that all turned off. I just need to check my steps. That's all I wanted to do. But it's like, hey, get the app. It'll keep track. You know, I'm like, okay, well, I'll give China a little bit of information, just a little bit. So I get the app and whatever. And and so I've been really good. And it says, Do you want to know your fitness age? And I said, Yeah, I want to know my fitness age. So I put in my my information and it sped out uh, an age of uh, 61. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't want to do mine. <laughs> I, I mean, you don't want to do I, yours. I'm proud of you, though. Like you fit in the seat. 
You Can you imagine what I was before? That'd be rough. That'd be rough. 70s? Yeah, probably. 80s? You act like an 80-year-old man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why Why did the 80-year-olds get away with it? Uh, I guess that's Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan White. Yes. How are you? Buddy? We didn't introduce him. It's 20 minutes in. <laughs> I wonder why. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, I'm just pointing out. That sorry, Jonathan from from Eaton, Colorado. Yeah, that's where I live. See, it's not where the shop is, but it's where I live. Where's the shop at? Uh, it's just uh, south in Greeley. Nice. Town. I live in a smaller town. I moved away to get away from the Californians. <laughs> he doesn't want to say what it. You went and did. <laughs> <He just> Look <laughs> at what you went and did. No, I just like smaller towns. I, <laughs> I can't wait for the comments. I'm going to yeah. enjoy them from the Californians. Like, it's great here. You're just jealous. You jealous of your weather and your terrain. I am. It's it's beautiful. The beaches. But not your barbecue. There is no barbecue in California. There are some phenomenal restaurants in California. Yeah, they are, are epic. The food is just otherworldly. It, it is. It is nuts. There is. Uh, I used to. I used to drink. I used to drink. Don't drink anymore. But we went to um, we went to to Napa Valley. There's a there's a winery there. It's called Mum. Mm-hmm. And are you familiar? Yeah. Have you been? Mm-hmm. You went to the winery. Yeah. So they have a tasting, mm-hmm. and they have tastings everywhere there. But they have a fancy tasting. It's more expensive. And we were on our honeymoon. We're like let's, and they bring out cheese. They're like this cheese was made by monks in Spain, and it sits in a basement. For 30 years and then they ship it out and then we have some here and you try it with this wine and oh by the way sit here overlooking this vineyard with these rolling hills it is nuts and you just sit back and go okay i could get used to this yeah what was that charge i don't care this is fantastic. <laughs> yeah this is the, the price is irrelevant at that point the experience is is so Good. It is for the the wine. If you drink, I don't drink anymore again. But if you drink, the wine is fantastic. We joined the wine club. They started shipping it, and I was paying the hundred and fifty bucks a month or whatever for them to ship me wine, just so we could get a taste of what we experience there. Because if you're in the wine club, by the way, you don't get the stuff that they sell at the grocery store. The grocery store has the twenty five dollar bottles. They ship you the fancy reserve stuff that they charge you a hundred bucks for and it's you know 10 year old or whatever it is so good it is fantastic cook with it too i still have a few bottles left it is so good it's better than me <laughs> i get something i like and it's gone it's gone it's gone yeah we didn't we don't even then we didn't drink that much but you know it, they're expensive bottles of wine for the most part, because you know you can buy a decent bottle of wine for fifteen bucks. Right. This is a hundred dollars, so you kind of want to save it for something. Right. Am he's I boring bored. you? He's bored now. I, I am. I'm boring him with this. <laughs> it's a food coma. I I am riveting. It's the food coma. It's I'm gonna food. Do. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at Shanahan's, and he cuts into this this steak. And and I keep seeing him like rip it apart, and he's got this mound on the side of the plate. And I'm like, dude, just you eat the meat and the fat together, and it, you know. And he's like, dude, that's all gristle. Yep. And here's a how much was that freaking thing? Seventy bucks for that yeah. piece of meat, mm-hmm. and it was like thirty percent gristle. Yeah, it was pretty rowdy. We we went to eight oh one. Eight oh one was good the other night. Really good. Eight oh one's always good. And we then go to the one in Kansas City. It's good. Yeah, we went to Double Eagle last night. That was good. Was Del really Frisco's. Good. Yeah, but it's the Del Frisco's Double Eagle. It's not Del Fit Frisco. Is there a difference? Yeah, there yeah. is. Yeah, it was good. It was really There's, good. That one was good. There's lots of good places. Not, yeah. I mean, not as many out here, but you go farther into Denver. Yeah, like Denver that. does have a lot of really nice restaurants for sure. And then there's lots of uh, their. Uh, you might not enjoy some of the people there, but uh, <laughs> there's... Uh, Are they, is it all Californians? <laughs> it's just progressive, um, but uh, they do. There's oh, lots yeah. of those restaurants that have the... Um, 
it's where you get a bunch of people and it's just all shared plates. Oh yeah. So you yeah, can yeah. try oh, a ton yeah. of food, but yeah. it's not like your own individual plate, which is, I mean, some That's people like that. Some people well. don't, but, um, there's a restaurant. I can't think of their name, but they're out of, sh- they got a, sh- it's basically in a bunch of shipping containers. It's fantastic. Um, but I can't think of the name. right. Somebody now. told us about an Italian restaurant in town that was like in somebody's house. Like it was a converted house. But it, it, that that's like that's the whole restaurants here. They're weird, All right? Like we went to one. It was called Fruition, and it was off the beaten path a little bit. And then you went into like this, like addition to a house, and that's that was the restaurant. It was packed, and we had asked a waiter at a fancy downtown restaurant, "Hey, where do the like where's the foodie like?" He's like, "Oh." Oh yeah, you need to go to this place here, because it's that's everybody in the know. That's where they go, and because it's not, it's mm-hmm. not in the on the main drag or whatever. And right. It's in the addition of somebody's house. Had some duck there. It was fantastic. It was really good. Nice. I have no problem with progressivism. <laughs> I have no problem. <laughs> oh, I'm, this <laughs> I I have no problem with Californians. <laughs> I just don't want them to move into Kansas City. Or anywhere near me. That's all. Hey, I, we have we have sponsors that are in Cotta, California. I They're wonderful. A, I love all of them. I have a suggestion <laughs> for you. It's true. I love them. They're sweet people. What? Why don't you ask him about some of the developments that have been happening in his life recently? Did you have more kids? I mean, I'm up to three and that's it. You're done? Yeah. My youngest just turned into a year old. Okay. Yeah. Congrats yeah. on that. Thank you. Yeah. What else has been going on in life? I hear you've got some changes work wise coming. Yeah. Um, I'm buying out my dad from the shop. Congrats. Yeah. So do you see the wrinkles, strain and the white beard? I like the shop. I mean Sure. Uh I've been slowly, I've been made, being able to make a lot of the changes that I want to make a little bit faster than I used to, Yeah, which is good. I mean, we had our first company ever 20% net month. It was actually nice. 20% wow. last month. That's very good. What? Let me ask you this. You said that you just kind of got some leeway to make some changes. Mm-hmm. What were those changes? What What were the first couple of things you went for? Um, well, I raised our oil change price. Okay. I What's also, it now? Uh, it's $60 an hour instead of 50 for a oh, paper. Okay. Yeah. And then, I mean, synthetics like 80, 89 ish. Yeah. So not crazy, but yeah. Uh, and then I got rid of all the other labor rates cause we had like bulbs were a hundred dollars an hour and alignments were a hundred dollars an hour. And then, uh, you know, uh, we had a fifty dollar labor rate and the, this labor rate, and I just got rid of all that because the effective labor rate was never where it needed to be. You're right. So we're finally to ten percent erosion on our um, labor rate. So, nice, nice. Um, Change some of the optimizer settings because I use Shopware. Um, hey, we're getting the labor matrix. I know. That's yeah, exciting. you got. You got to remember, I'm. Uh, uh, oh, you're in I, with the cool kids? I, I am I, not. I get to do a lot of the beta testing. I'm not in the, with the cool kids. Well, that's because he tells we kinda, me. We kind of <laughs> tried to keep Whatever. you out. It's because just... they're it's cause you just it's cause they're from California. <laughs> <laughs> I do I mean, bulbs for free. I don't. I'm, yeah, me either. Really? Yeah. Is that why I'm poor? And broke I mean, all the most time? of the time we do, do the bulbs anyways because yeah. I don't wanna, they don't value paying a technician that's fine but i'm not going to do them for free because yeah. i'm going to pay my guys to do well i pay them my guys i mean they're getting paid well, that's why you're not making money and that's why you can't afford a review <laughs> you know <laughs> david i told you i told you david no, you told but. me what start charging for balls and we get a rivian yes i hate you what else <sighs> um just uh I actually finally got a really solid crew of people. That was a big yeah. factor there. I mean, everybody hit their goal for hours this week. So 
That's we're, awesome. We're four day work week. Right. And everybody hit over 40 hours. <laughs> Even my, uh, my younger, he just graduated tech school. He did 35. That's great. Now the, the last time we talked, I don't remember this being an option that was on the table. Cause it didn't seem like it was right. And my dad didn't seem like he was ever going to want to retire. And I was getting tired of not being able to grow more right. or less. Um, yeah, but he did at least see like, hey, there's going to be, there has to be an end game here. I don't need to retire, but I can't also stay in the same capacity for forever. Right. But I mean, like some of the changes that I wanted to make, I was constantly shut down on or not really allowed to, or I had to like run it past him and then modify those changes. Yeah, I was never he never trusted fully to. Yeah, I mean, when he'd hired people, it was um, and granted, some of those hires are still there, and they they were actually really good hires. But his philosophy was, you, you were hired for a job, and you're just you do it. It's an old mentality, um, and I don't think it really works that much anymore. So um, now you hire them; they don't do the job. You still have to pay them. It's terrible. That might just be you, man. <laughs> That's not what you meant? No. Oh. I mean, Dang. I have expectations. Yeah. Sure. Um, what, what, I mean, like, if we really dig in, what was the conversation, you know, between you and dad like? What What was it? Was there a, a pivotal turning point in this? Yeah. I basically told him I was going to leave or he needed to figure out what he wanted to do because. Dang, Really? Yeah. I had to come to that? Well, that's usually the best way to get my dad to, to I mean, move. Ultimatums. To, to ultimatums, yeah, yeah, more or less. He's slow to just react, more yeah. or less. Um, he doesn't like change a whole lot, so he likes kind of staying in his own lane. It's, I mean, the shop did for eight years, did only, it never grew, um, which obviously... You should always grow because right. the cost of everything goes up every year. Yeah. yeah. So um, I was uh, slowly able to make changes. And How long did he have it? How long is he? The shop's 38 years old. So he, he started it? Uh, yeah. Basically, he fell into it. So out of, he was just working there. Out of college, he had a marketing degree, liked tinkering with cars was working for a guy who basically went bankrupt and more or less just gave him the business. And then he kind of kept with it and he really developed a really good reputation, which is one of the reasons that I was able to, um, you know, kind of maximize, uh, going forward. Um, you know, getting profits where, they needed to be to actually be sustainable and stuff like that. We also made a really good move um, in 2014 when he sold the old building to a, a pot shop. Um, <laughs> so we actually moved downtown Greeley, which at the time I thought was terrible, but we couldn't put together a new building at the time because the shop had never really made money. Yeah, so yeah. therefore we couldn't get a loan and all that. Yeah. Do the capital to do that. Yeah. And plus, we almost had the capital and everything to do it, but then our city came back that it was going to cost a half million more than what we had got, planned on. Yeah. Planned on just because we had to make basically all these things. That now there's chain stores that came to our town that didn't have to do any of that. So you oh, know that's all that up. all that fun stuff. Yeah. But dude, that's frustrating. Um, you know. Automotive is a dirty industry. That's how it's referred to. So it's hard to, in my town, to have an automotive shop. Like there's very limited places you can have one. Mm -hmm. So either build out new or, and have the right people to get that to happen, which, yeah. you know, the only places new that have been built are Christian Brothers and Les Schwab. So, um, I'd like to have another location eventually out west and have two locations in Greeley. I don't think I'd ever want to go beyond that. Right. Uh, 
tell us a little bit about the conversation with dad when when you began to kind of dig into that when you made the ultimatum what was it that that dad came back with um yeah so i had had my third kid and i'd been making the same money since 2019 and realized that i needed to make more to afford healthcare primarily mm-hmm. um and the quality of life that I want from kids and things yeah. like that. And so I either needed to make a change at the shop yeah. so that I could grow or I had to go somewhere else. Right. Um, so basically just had a flat out conversation with them that I, there's, I either need a, a way to advance myself here Right. Or I, I need to leave. Yeah. And so um, he started taking more time off and the shop didn't burn down. And, you know, also the fact that he started letting me do things. Um, so I really started making changes in late 2018. Um, we went from 1.2 million to 1.4 and then we went to 1.6 and then we did 1.8 last year nice. and we're on track for 2.3 this year. Wow. Nice. That's so, awesome. um, and realistically that's actually with the same amount of texts every How year. How many texts do you have? Five. Nice. So, um, it's just, and he's been able to actually withdraw money from the business and, um, cash out and in a way and so i think that has also put him at ease that he can kind of let go and he's also been taking more trips and he's seeing the other side of not working all the time yeah you know a a couple things that it makes me think about is you know he clearly trusts you because uh, if he didn't trust you there's a couple scenarios in some of the the groups we run in where dad clearly doesn't trust and dad's unwilling to take his hand off and and whether that's warranted or not right i think it uh, from my perspective outside looking in thinking about you know that that i grew up in a family business and and that in our case that family business was owned by my grandparents and and so it's not just for my for my dad it's a legacy bigger than than just his own right and so i can really see from the outside looking in that your dad clearly really trusts you and and it was so important to him that you had it that he was like all right let's see what happens right i'm going to back off i'm going to see what happens and so i think that's really interesting i think it's really cool to hear that story I th- I almost wonder if he was waiting for you to make the ultimatum. Right. You know what I mean? All along he was just waiting and and knowing one day he's going to come and say this and I should be expecting this, right? What's taking so long? Why is he taking so long, you know? But but to see that growth and see that change and and to know that it sometimes it just takes that outside perspective, right? Because you had been you've been in the groups for gosh, what? 10 years now, something like that. Has it yeah. been that long? been a long time really that long yeah wow. i joined i was i joined not um it would have been i want to think like 2016 yeah was when i joined and i started i mean i started making small tweaks here and there mostly to i was writing a lot of service at that time mm-hmm. yeah so i just kind of i tried to be the best service advisor that i could um and uh then just I was allowed to basically I want to try and do this. I, I I mean I finally got my dad to move off of RO Rider in 2018. Yeah, that was my first. I remember big that change. big. Yeah, that that was. Uh, I think I was got, like pulling. Yeah, pulling teeth. I think I got like five or six Facebook messages over that. You'll never believe this. My dad's gonna let me or like something like that. You know, I remember that very clearly. That 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 was a big deal, and that felt like a massive change. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like from the conversations we'd been having about what was going on in the shop 
that he's going to let you implement a different SMS. And and I remember thinking back like, whoa, that's pretty big. And now to see all the change that's happened between now and then, I think that's pretty intense. What if one of your kids wanted to take over the shop? I think you can have it. <laughs> you can have it now. So my my daughter can have it. Ten ten years old, she can have it. She'll do a better job than I will. <laughs> I mean, Brandon's kind of your kid. I mean, does he count? They're all my children. All of them. <sighs> so how were you able to maximize the the revenue out of each technician? If you were doing five techs at 1.2, I mean, that's yeah, not good productivity. Well, I mean, back then, my so, I mean, I had a really good tech that got burnt out and left. And I saw him two years later, um, still kind of burnt out, but I, in him and me always kind of went back and forth cause I did stuff as an advisor that I shouldn't have, you know, took yeah. hours and things that I'm helping the customer. You didn't really, you know, things yeah, that yeah. I shouldn't have, yeah. um, that I know better now. Yeah. But, um, so we'd go back and forth and, I'd always want to understand why he did what he did. Um, and I saw him several years later and asked him, you know, what happened? Why did you get so burnt out? And, and I knew you were making good money because I knew what he flagged and, and yeah. all that. And he's like, honestly, you guys never raised your labor rates and never really gave wage increase beyond like a 25 cent raise. And I thought about it and I started learning more about KPIs and, and things like that. And I started really analyzing the business and why the fact that like we would do 1.2 and not make a dime. Yeah. yeah. Like 1% net. Yeah. Um, and so I really started looking into that. And I mean, in the last two years, the shop's gone from 115 an hour to I'm going to 175 actually next month. Nice. And he's I'll be actually right. probably more than any dealer in my town and probably more than any independent in my town. What on average, like if you look at those other shops and, and a, how are you finding out what they are? Um, calling and getting them to give me price quotes on something that's relatively simple. Right. They give you the price quotes. Oh yeah. That's a bad thing in our town. <laughs> Uh, just about everywhere. Mo- I mean, most dealers will just pop off the, the price. dealership. Well, but the the independents, I don't know. No, I you, should probably do a phone shopping in my do it later in the day out. when they they don't want to do the the you know convert a customer for twenty minutes. Mm-hmm. Oh really? Oh yeah, you'll get prices. Nice, that's a good trick. And it's a it's a thing that I have to train my staff not to do because yeah. they do the same thing. I was guilty of doing the same thing. Because uh, you don't want to do, do you know spiel. you don't want to do the 20 minute conversation. Why are you why are you asking that person thing? You know, right. qualifying the customer, figuring out what's really going on. Did they just get told by Joe Schmo that they need this or did they actually go yeah. someplace or what whatnot, you know. Yeah. But um yeah, I, I mean I got price quotes and and figured out where everybody's labor rate. Pretty much everybody's right about 135 to 150. Um, some some of the guys are 160. I'm the biggest independent in my town, like as far as square footage, building size, everything. How big is um, the building? Like 10,000 square feet. Wow. That's a big shot. It's a monster. Yeah, realistically, my my magic number, if I put a tech in every bay, would be like 5 million. Either. Yeah. What? How many bays have you got then? Eleven. That's not two flats, right? Wow, eleven and two flats. Now, did you end up building a new shop, or you know, because you you moved? Yeah, no, we moved into a, an existing shop. It was actually a parts store. Um, okay. Then, yeah, at that time, it only had let's see, had two, three, four, five six seven eight bays at that time we blew down a wall and added three i'm going to probably next year put an ac and um 
blow down the mezzanine and another wall and add another bay. That's going to be how much? What are you going to spend on? Probably $25,000 to put AC in that. No, like 75000 Yeah. 75? It's, it's really expensive. Mm, yeah. Not when, especially when your building's divided. You'd have to see our building, but it's uh, really divided. If I had one gigantic, you know, uh, like more like your shop, it'd be a little bit easier to put an AC. But okay. um, yeah, with the building, I got to put in air handler units. Pretty and, much. and be able to move the air from space to space to space, yeah. Yep. That sucks. But I think it's, an, I mean, realistically, a it's, just a, it's going to be a goal for the techs. We need to constantly hit our yeah. goals, and you hit our your goals, and the shop hits its goals. So We're therefore, gonna, you get AC. What when, when we talk about where you're at right now, what are the next changes that you see on the horizon? that you kind of want to start? I want to iron out processes a little bit more. Um, that's a big thing on my list because it was, you know, you just do this. And luckily I have, you know, one advisor that's, he's slow, but he's very good. Mm-hmm. Um, so just ironing out processes, making sure we're not skipping things, especially when it gets busy. Yeah. Um, I notice that the most on Fridays because we're four day work week. It's chaos on Friday. It yeah. always is. It always will be. You're shortening five days into four. Yeah. But um, just making sure that we're constantly hitting our marks and doing things the correct way that we know how to do them so that we keep the reputation that we do. Right. Looking back, would you have changed? anything about the process or the trajectory to get to here? Because the last interview, you were really frustrated. You, you were like, we all felt it. You were like, I'm done. I didn't feel it. I don't know what you're talking about. When I was with Brandon Dills, just short. Yeah. Short and sweet before my class. Yeah. Um, I would have tried to push a little bit sooner to make the changes. Yeah. Um, Cause realistically we all know that, COVID was very good for our industry. Yeah. Um, It was after the daddy Trump money hit. Yeah. Before that. Oh man. I mean, we only slowed down for two months. Realistically, Um, April, May, that's it. And then it was, it was crazy. Did you cut back on staff? Nope. Yeah. We, we changed our hours. Did you? Yeah. We went, we were seven to six and we went to eight to five. And then now we're seven thirty to five thirty um, Tuesday through Friday. I guess don't get that much work done. Seven thirty. <laughs> we get there at eight thirty. We start late. They don't actually start working till ten. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, and then they get done, done in two. Bath. No, no, no. They don't get done till so the next you, day at two o'clock. Do you have any production job. incentives? For you guys, oh, I know that's a, a to guilty word. Do that, but um, yes and no, but it, you know they're not. That's not even it. I don't know what it is. the The shop always takes the personality of the of the owner. And that's just the way it is. And me, nah, I don't care. <laughs> 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 just want to pay the bills. That's it. That's all I'm worried about. I mean, I it, it, it kind of does seem that way, right? Is that <clears throat> that that's who you are? That is, I am, and that's that's sort of the problem. Is like I need to, um, I need to to not be around. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you could always find someone that wants to run it, and yeah. you can just be a, an apps to, to owner. Um, I mean, and then have someone that wants to push the envelope but that's um i mean that's where i'm at so yeah. my guys know that i'll reward them and, but i ex- i have expectations yeah and uh just sold you him know the shop <laughs> if you don't want to sold him the shop i know right <laughs> you, you don't have uh, you know that's why i think um i know this is a a hot topic sometimes, but we'll, we'll, we'll go gently down it. But I've gone through a couple management 
companies, and yeah. I understand why now uh, being in it versus looking at it that ShopFix teaches flat rate because it's a way to implement a system that kind of self-corrects itself yeah. to an extent without actually really managing it. And that's the reason that it's taught. Not that saying that I do that. I don't. Um, it's lazy management, right? Yeah, exactly. But it, say, it's not it, lazy. It's not. It's not lazy. It, it's just it's it's hands off approach. Yeah, right. Yeah. It, it's a self corrective system. Yeah, um, and that's a, realistically, you see how many shops that are struggling or not being successful, and if they implement certain systems, it kind of self manages it without them actually managing it. Yeah, and that's the thought process behind some of that. Now, I like seeing. We've now. always understood the thought process. We understand why they do it. Our rebuttal has always been the state of the industry is currently what it is because due to of that. everything that was done previously. Right. If everybody has been on flat rate up to this point, this is the result 600,000 technicians short by 2026. Yeah. And I mean, and a whole bunch of pissed off. A, a lot of that came techs. from, you know, advisors cutting hours. I was guilty of that. Yeah. That was another, uh, the fact that owners weren't charging enough and then they would cut the tech's hours because they weren't charging enough. A lot of it comes down to not that the flat rate necessarily was a bad system, but that it caused a lot of other issues because it wasn't, you weren't, companies weren't being run correctly. More or less. I don't. Wait, I don't know. Yeah. No. Well, that's, wait, the, wait. that's the shop fix. Are you drinking the Kool Aid? Is this what is happening here? Are you with Shop Fix now? I am with Shop Fix. Currently. Oh, this is awesome. This is great. Hey. Uh. So. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. We don't, I like we don't. seeing. I mean, I'm not going to stay there forever. Um. Probably my next point of landing will be with uh, Cecil. I yeah. like seeing. Ooh, I like that. This I like seeing. Plug for the sponsors. I like this. Is I like great. seeing different perspectives. We did not plan that, by the way, at all. <laughs> Just the way he's going to leave Shop Fix <laughs> to go to <laughs> Here's yeah. here's the issue. Here's here's where where we we sort of. I I I understand why Shop Fix the way they do things is successful. It's scalable, it's repeatable, and it works almost in any, every market. And here, but the rebuttal has been one. You and and the argument we've had is that um, the shop fix people don't care. They they don't care. They don't care. And not not you. You seem nice, but some of them, <laughs> some of them just want the boat, and so. Right. They're like, okay, so we're going to be 600,000 technicians short. We learned that today at the conference. Yeah. 600,000 technicians short by 2026. Okay. That's only two and a half years away, right? Mm -hmm. 600,000 technicians short. They're looking at it going, and I don't care. I'm staffed. Screw everybody else. Okay, that's fine. The If you saw the chart that they posted of the amount of technicians going into the automotive school right. thing right it's this like straight downhill slope where they have every year over year fewer and fewer people are going to become technicians they're just then choosing something yeah. else the perception of the industry has not gotten any better or changed it's been pretty much flat since the last time they did it was like 2018 or 17 or whenever they, they did this last survey they checked back and it's just a couple ticks away. It's like 39% uh, would encourage their children into this industry. And now it's like 42% or something like that. Here's what has changed. The technology on the cars. Right. Yeah. They have changed. Flat rate works beautifully. If all you do is bang out suspension work and gaskets. If that's all you have to do. And, and if you pack in those cars into your shop pay your guys flat rate, 
bringing them in on cheapy oil changes and doing the whole dog and pony show and you're swapping ball joints all day long, you are going to make an absolute killing. At some point, at some point, you are going to hit a technology deficiency that is going to threaten your business. I don't know what Shafix is teaching to get around this. I don't know what they're teaching. I have no idea. I bought the the first set of courses when they were like two ninety nine or two ninety seven. He was selling them when he first came out. I bought yeah. them. Everybody bought them. You went through the classes. It makes sense. It's a tire shop model. Yeah, it, yeah. it is. And by the way, the the whole class is available for free online. It was just taught by somebody else. It was Greg Sands and his organization. Like it's free on YouTube. So you can see their whole system with the chart and the dispatch, the whole thing, right? And yeah, that works in a flipping tire store that is just banging out suspension work. The minute you introduce, hey, that car is 1234YF and it's got ADOS. And by the way, it's got a leaking condenser. What do we do now? Right. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so you sublet. Fine. What if there's nobody in your area that'll sublet? What if they screw up and then they just go out of business? Who's left holding the bag? Did you buy the 1234YF machine? How did you factor that into your, your, what if there's a problem? Do you even know how to use the flip and sniffer? You know who does it? Nobody knows how to use the sniffer. Have you used the 1234YF sniffer? I use the bullseye. It is a nightmare. Even the bullseye. It's a nightmare too. You know what you don't always find? Evaporator leaks with flip and bullseye. Yes. Yeah, that's. Yeah, exactly. It's great with cracks on the condenser. Not so great when you have to sit there and do a hour and a half diag process that what they have to do it for an hour and a half. The technician t- needs to take an hour and a half to two hours to do that flip and diag. What's the price they're going to sell? Well, it's uncompetitive if they sell it for two and a half hour. Hey, by the way, it's two and a half hour diag charge. So what do they do? Because that's what they have to charge. If it's two hours, it's two and a half to 2.75 in order for it to be profitable because they don't have any parts margin in there, right? Okay, so what are they really doing? What did Cody Gaddy say? What did Cody Gaddy say? What did he say? They cut it down to an hour. Then they came to him and they said, you're not making us any money. And then he goes, you're not making, I'm not making you any money because you undercut my four hour diag and charge the customer an hour. This is a four-hour diag because it takes four hours. Here's all my notes. It was a four-hour diag. Charge the four hours. We can't do that. So we're letting you go so we can hire in. That's ownership. That's not not ownership, dear. That's not ownership. That is the business model cannot sustain what he does. They can't. They're bringing in. They're bringing in as many people as possible. That's what that yeah, it doesn't work if you don't pile in the cars. Flat rate doesn't work if you don't have 45 cars parked outside. It doesn't work because you're not feeding the tax. I mean, we do diag all day. And we And I'm sure you're wonderful at it. I'm just telling you. <laughs> it is really difficult to continuously and, and you're you're in a how much are you trying for your oil changes? You just said about you 80, 90. Yeah, 80, 90 bucks. Okay. The traditional not, shop. Not with it. Our, we have a coupon that gets people in the door. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, 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 it does I, it, it worked. It does work good. It works. I, right? I won't do it. I've, I've got coupons for other stuff. I will not do the cheap oil change coupon. That I don't just, want I, See, pots, see, see I won't do the alignment one. Right. Those, that one pisses me off. I've I've flat out said there's no way I'm doing that. With the most of your alignments take 15 minutes. If you got a good alignment machine and a good alignment guy, fifteen minutes. Okay, pack them in there around hundred bucks. Hundred bucks, do seventy nine ninety nine alignments, and just pack them in all day long. And then you're selling tires and you're selling suspension part. Look, I get the whole model. It makes sense. The complexity of the vehicles and the complexity of the repair process is going to get more difficult. And the pump them in, do it as fast as possible, kick them out, churn the bay is going to get more and more difficult. And the only way that it's going to continue to work is to chart jacking up the prices as high as possible. Yeah. So otherwise it will not work. It, you cannot. And and then even then, like you still, you're going to charge $225 an hour and still pay the technician 40 because otherwise 
it's not going to work any other way. You have to, hey, it's one hour diag, but it's 225 when you used to charge 140. It's 225 now, and I'm still paying the technician for an hour diag. He still has to get it done in 45 minutes. The complexity of the vehicles will get to the point where that that's not going to happen. That's not going to be sustainable. The 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 type the just the repair process is is they they build these cars weirdly. You ever done a rear main seal on a Fiat? Mm, can't say that I have. Let me tell you about the rear main seal. Oh, you have. Yeah, Did have you, you buy done, the tool? Yeah. Have you done the the stupid oil um, with the little the holes cam thing? Uh, the oil actuated cam the shafts. phasers. No, the oh. oil actuated camshaft. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely yeah. buy the tool on that because we've nuked one of those without doing it without the tool. That sucks. And it bent the valves. That was oh. cool. Yeah, I learned that once. The yeah. guy on YouTube's like, oh, yeah, you don't need that tool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because if it's like, it shows there's in service info, it's like good, bad. Literally look at the two pictures and tell me there's a difference because there's. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fiat thing. The, what the, they're, they're not. They're not like the engine that was in this Fiat, the same thing they put in the Dodge Start. Okay. Mm-hmm. And on the rear main seal, we're doing a clutch. On the rear the main active. seal. What's that? Are they the air active engine? Yeah. 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 So the, the rear main seal on this thing, it technically requires you to pull the oil pan. Well, if you pull the oil pan, it adds quite a bit to the repair. And you're just in there doing a clutch and you're like, eh, it looks like the rear main seal is kind of leaking. The problem is the tool is $250. And by the way, if you buy the Cortico rear main, you don't need it. It comes with the sleeve. If you try to install it without the sleeve, it'll leak. If if you don't take the oil pan off and put the liners on it, then you can't run the bead of silicone in just the right spot to get this mother effer not to leak. And so you will put this back together thinking that it's sealed. That mother effer will flippity flip and leak. It will leak all over again. Now, back in the day, that was just a slap, slap. You're done. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's now, hey, we sold the rear main seal because it kind of needs it, but we should have also sold X, Y, and Z. Maybe you call the customer and get the extra time. Maybe, maybe you don't. Maybe the flat rate tech goes, nah, I can do this without that. And they may screw something up. And the whole thing was just research and then deciding and then looking at the design. And who is paying me for all that? Who's paying the tech? That's why I don't do flat rate. Yeah. I do hourly with a production bonus. He's so cute. I love him. He's fantastic. <laughs> and we do, obviously, we do uh, um, a bump on all the labor guide and right. all yeah. that. You have to do that. The, but in, and you know, like I get my, my Brandon, he gets so like, he gets all amped up. He's like, he's like, oh, I need, I need point three for, for research. It's like, okay, well, I already factor that in with the bump. Like we jack up the labor rate. Like the labor guide says an hour, you were charging 1.4. Well, so using, some of it is if you're using motor, yeah, you got to do that. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> but if, we, if we, you're using Mitchell, then maybe one point two five. We will we'll cross reference to all data. That's what we typically do. But and yeah. it, it, it's not even gotten to that point. Now it's now on some vehicles, and even it's not even like GM vehicle or like your, your Euro. With Euro, you have to you have to look at the R and R procedure. You you can't go off the time. That's so why I don't work on your. Do you just avoid your own entirely? Yep. I don't do it. Yeah. I, I basically work with a shop that is just three blocks away. Yeah. You just send have a really good reputation or good relationship with them. And I send all the work to them. And when they're too busy with Euro and they want, they send me their, their customers on the domestic side. But I flat out do not do a Euro and I don't do anything older than 96 unless my oldest tech has to approve it. Yeah. yeah. He has to say, yes, I'll do that. We don't yeah. do anything all in 2000. But, you know, that's an opportunity for you and say, yeah, I'm going to capture the Euro and you hire a Euro tech. Right. Uh, where I'm at, it's 
it'd be more of an issue to say no to Euro if I was farther west. Yeah. Like we don't have any Euro dealers directly where I'm at. Yeah. But they're all in Loveland, Fort Collins. Right. Okay. So I don't usually the Euros that I see are the sixth owner clapped out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. And that's you why know. you say no to them yeah. happily. Like, yeah. no, no, pass. Yeah, no, nobody wants to spend you know. I, it, I, I understand. I, I just think that it's the, the, the business model itself is no different than what Congress is doing. They just keep, they, they need to pay off those special interests and not the nefarious ones like, Hey, I need to pay off the local whatever institution or the local school needs money or the, the, uh, um, the historically black college university fund needs funding. And you know, they're, these are all small special interests. The farmers, everybody's always like, Oh, we need more money for the farmers. Everybody says that, but what are they doing with that? They're borrowing money. They're borrowing money to pay all this stuff because they've promised it. And all they're doing is screwing over the future generations where at some point we're going to hit insolvency or something like it. Who knows what will happen? I have no idea. Some people say that nothing will happen. It'll be fine. We can just borrow into perpetuity for forever. But we're sort of screwing over the future in order yeah. to, to take care of the present. I don't. I see that whole business model no differently. It's an antiquated understanding of automotive repair. I, I, I get what you're saying. My rebuttal to that would be if if you have bad owners that don't have any business sense and no understanding, if you give them some business sense, isn't that a step in the right direction where they're not burning bridges it, and technicians? It can be. Like I'm not, I'm, I, uh, I think TV just went to sleep. Um, oh. I mean, I think that um, now being in it, and seeing some of the things that they do do for their employees and whatnot, there's always going to be the members that go in there. They're only looking to skin the sheep the one way. Those are the ones that are bad apples. They're going to be in any industry. I mean, it just is what it is. But but even if you say like you take the the simply the what's what's that dude's name? The, what's what's the name of the is it True Auto Simply Auto something? Yes, yeah, Simply True Automotive. Group. Okay, okay, Simply yeah. True. Yeah, yeah. You, you see their outings and they're, hey, we're doing this thing and we're doing that for our employees. Where are you going? Hey, get, grab me one here. Oh, I'll Thank take you. one too. Um, you, you see you see the outings that they're doing and the and when Seth does his, uh, we're going to the vacation house and on the lake and we're doing this. Yeah, they, it's a whole thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's a whole shtick. And that's that's cool. It's a, They are producing revenue affords them these opportunities and they can hire extra people and give the upward mobility. And I I get all of that, but the ends can't justify the means to say that this is the end result. Great money for my people, all these opportunities. Look at how big this organization, if in the process you're burning the bridge towards the future, so you can then say, but look at all this stuff I'm doing. It's like, okay, that's that's great, dude. But at the same time, at the same time, you are telling people that my $70 oil change on that Hyundai is somehow screwing them over because you're doing it for $25. I am using a very high-grade synthetic blend oil, and I only use the OE filter because otherwise those stupid things will blow up, right? <laughs> and I'm not... And, and they leak, yeah. I'm not using the 1334A. And now the customer, they don't know the flipping difference to them. It's an oil change is an oil change. But hey, that shop fix shop down the street's doing it. I have a shop fix shop, like a block away from me. A block away from me. This is his third shop he's bought. And the the place that was in there had been there since 1950, like eight or something. The family owned it all the way up until I can't do this anymore. I think it was a granddaughter. It was the granddaughter of the original owner. And she's like, I can't find technicians. Like I, I need to get out. And this, he comes in with this SBA or money and a seven, a loan. And he's like, 
It's just a giant pile of money. Great location, eight bays. Like, who wouldn't want to jump on that? So he, he buys them out, slaps the name on it, and $24.99 oil change. Now, I'm at $68. He's at $24.99. I have to now justify my cost to the customer. I'm doing the right thing for them. I'm using the right oil. I'm using the right oil filter. I'm explaining to them it's every 3,500 miles, not when the stupid thing tells you to change the oil. I do a full inspection every single time you come in there. We're going to make sure we advocate properly. They are selling you work because every one of those mother efforts in that building is commission-based. Every single one of those is commission-based. Commission-based. They don't sell you something, dear. They don't eat. I, however, lose money every single time. I'm not going to make any money on the $68 oil change. I'm not. Are you making money on $68 oil changes? Very minimal. Very, very little money. And, yeah, but that, they're doing it for twenty four ninety nine, and I'm telling them, and I'm telling them though all this, but in their the back of their mind, he's feeding me a line of BS. Now, that's on a Hyundai that takes synthetic blend oil with a stupid oil filter, which is six bucks, and I mark it up to like eleven. Right? As the cars get more complex, as the oil becomes more critical, a Dexos two, not just whatever, right? It has to be Dexos 2. You just bought this thing. Guess what happens at 70,000 miles when you don't use Dexos 2 oil and a really, really good quality oil filter at the bare minimum, an AC Delco? What happens? You'll be burning oil like crazy. You'll be burning oil like crazy. You're going to blow up the chains. That stupid thing is going to lock up, and now you still owe money on this turd, and now you have to put in a $12,000 engine in this thing. Why? Because you went down to the $24.99 yeah, I mean, uh, the, realistically, it's taught that it's a loss leader. It's not saying to use the wrong. Oil uh, or, that's not what they do, though. That is I not mean, what uh, they that's, do. That's up to the operator. I use all the right stuff, but yeah, and my, but I, my but you're cheap, also not running flat rate, and you're also not doing the alignment thing. You're you're piecemealing, right? I, you know, there there was some of these guys are not piecemealing. Well, yeah, I mean, I I, I mean, there's always going to be that. Uh, there's just, I mean, ATI, and, I mean, they all, yeah. I mean, they all do it to an extent. There, there was, there was a comment a while back. I probably shouldn't say this, but I'm going to, there was a comment a while back and it was somebody sent me a copy of a thread and it said, there's a series of standards and those standards are use the cheapest part you can beat your technician up on the hours and the time and the, the, labor to do it and tell your client you're using a really high quality part while you're using a really low quality part and do whatever you got to do if you got to discount the job whatever you have to do to get the job just get this the job this isn't a shop fix thing I'm, we're no, just no, telling no, you no, this, no. Is, this is not oh, this no. is not a shop fix thing. Like, no, this is th- these are no, these are no, coaching no, no, no. companies that are teaching this that hey every single one of your technicians is a lexus expert did you know that Every single one. Why? Because they called about Alexis. Oh, my technicians are experts on I Alexis. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. We're just talking in general. Well, no, I, I, general, I'm pretty gener- sure I know which one he's talking about. Generalities. Generalizations. Yeah. Is that I the mean, correct word? There's, yeah. there's, there's, there's people that do that in all industries. I mean, there there's are. people, and like they, my and wife they, did, she made cookies. And, you know, there's different variations of cookie stores. There's ones that use all the synthetic ingredients and the cheapest stuff possible to make the cookies. Uh, and then there's also places that, that are you, don't. Are you talking but, disparagingly about crumble? Maybe. <gasps> <laughs> it's okay. They put a lot of sugar. It's why you like but, it. But, okay. Hang on. Hang it's on. fat and sugar. It's <laughs> always fat and sugar. It's not the point. <laughs> let, let me, let me just tell y'all something though. Okay. There is this, there was this. He's crushed me. I don't like him anymore. <laughs> Make him go away. <laughs> Be gone with him. <laughs> the, okay, so have your honey buns. There was this bagel company. I like honey buns. <laughs> I like crumble cookies. <laughs> They're so good. There was this bagel company in town, and they made the best effing bagels ever. They were so good. Were they Dutch approved? They were in, in Dutch. This was before I knew Dutch, right? Mm-hmm. And they were so good. And we used to go in there all the time. And I would get a, a cheddar 
sausage egg and cheese bagel. Oh my god, it was so good, and there were the the bagels were just perfect. They were soft. They weren't chewy on the outside. They didn't have like a really thick outer layer. They they were airy, and so they they weren't too dense. They were mm. just right. And every time you went in this place, it was completely lined up out the door. And this other company that is extremely well known, extremely high quality products, and does really fantastic stuff, bought the bagel company and ruined it. And so we started going in and buying bagels. And like they tasted like effing cardboard. <laughs> I swear to God, they were terrible. And they were chewy. <laughs> and like they would pull your teeth out. I mean, it was just, it was miserable. Is there like a chain that I can go to that your wife approves of that they use good ingredients? And I don't are they, know if they have any. They're, so it's local here, but it's called Mary Mountain Cookies. Mm. You want to go find a Mary Mountain gonna, Cookie tomorrow? I'm going to have to, yeah. Where's the closest one? be honest i i don't know where all the locations are but i can find out or i'll just send you a box (laughs) well so here's the thing what if i don't like them i'm gonna feel bad for you when the crumble cookies feel better you like cherries yeah i mean sure and you like chocolate yeah okay Okay, so when those cookies come out in like another month i'll send them cherry cherry chocolate yeah they're so good are they they're actual cherries not, you know, not like fake. Pit, the actual <laughs> pitted cherries yeah. that really? they put into the dough. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, so so we go into this bagel place, right? And what what I does thought you were like? done with the bagel story. No, I'm, sorry. I'm <laughs> still mad. We started talking about cookies. Uh-huh. We got off topic. We go into the bagel place, and and my wife's like, "Hey, I, I don't like to be the one to complain, but the bagels suck now." <laughs> <laughs> and the lady's like. Yeah, we've we've noticed nobody's buying the bagels anymore, and, and we're not selling bagels. We've we've taken all the preservatives and all of the stuff that's bad for you out of them. And my wife says, "I think I'd put it back in." <laughs> She's like, "We don't do that here. Like, well, we don't buy bagels from you anymore." I mean, like, come on now. I, I I'm with you to yeah. a degree. Sometimes the bad stuff is the good stuff. I I, I get that. But you've you've <laughs> dashed just, his hopes and dreams. Crumble is just that's just so much freaking sugar. You know, some of those cookies have more sugar than a Mountain Dew in them. Like, oh more yeah, than two no, Mountain no. Dews. Like, like it, you ever you ever seen the guy? He's like, I'm going to try to burn a crumble cookie in exercise. He ate a whole crumble cookie, which is 700 plus calories yeah. for one cookie. <laughs> so you never eat a whole cookie, right? You eat a fourth of each kind of cookie. Is what <laughs> now the the lemon one that they do, I I definitely like that one. I like them all. It's really hard for me to not to eat one and go. Nah. My we went to this hometown bakery and I don't what the hell was the name of the town. I'm gonna nah, I'm gonna find the name of the town anyway. What we town go to this were we in? We've been in so many towns. No at no this no point. no. This is where the Wizard of Oz thing is in in uh, uh. in Kansas, the museum. My wife is going to get uh, Wamego, Wamego, Kansas. Hmm. You ever been? No. It's a dirt little town in the middle of nowhere. Oh, that's probably why. And they have a Wizard of Oz museum there. And my wife was raving about this little bakery that they've got at the end of the yellow brick road. You go down. It's, a, it's an alleyway, by the way. You go down this alleyway that has like paintings of the Wizard of Oz stuff. And then you get to the end and they have this bakery. And it's this little hometown bakery. You can see them making the stuff there. They were the worst cookies I've ever had. They were junk. They were dry and flavorless, and they were just, no. And I'm like, these are junk. I want my crumble cookie cookies. He's very specific. <laughs> they, the, the bagel place, though, they they make killer cookies, and they're so good. There's like there's there's one that's like a... Are they, better, are they better than crumble cookies? Yeah. Are they? They're like a brown sugar cookie. Oh, my God. Yeah, they have they have one that's a brown sugar cookie with an almond glaze on yeah, it. Yeah, dude. That one's... I, so, I'm not a big sweet person. And my wife worked there. And she... My, I'd have people that are like, your wife works, works at a cookie store and bakes all the time. Like, how are you not fat? I'm like, well, I just don't... I'm not a big sweet person. But... If she ever 
brought home those almond cookies. Oh my God. Well, I would eat everyone. You see, the problem is, is that <laughs> David and I, if our wives worked in a cookie factory, we wouldn't even have to eat the cookies. We would just get fatter by default. <laughs> I'd be in a wheelchair. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> You're not far off now, according to your fitness calculator. <laughs> the, my fitness calculator said I was 61 years old. Can you believe that? That's depressing. Yeah, I kind of can. I'll just <laughs> be honest with you. I mean, I'm, my joints feel like they're 61 years old. I mean, like we we go to Apex and SEMA, and mm. and we have to have like planned break spots for him to catch his breath. Yeah, so, yeah that's a lot of walking though. It really is. is. Thank you. Thank you for I validating mean, my. I, the first time I went, I remember because uh, I went with my dad and I was like so excited. And, and uh, by day three, I'm like, yeah. this sucks. Yeah. 21 like, miles yeah. later, <laughs> you're like, well, oh, we finally hit our marathon. I'm like, yeah. yeah. We finally mileage, got to the other yeah, end of the, the trade show. <laughs> Jeez. It, well, yeah. I, I, I get what you're saying. It, I think, though, the, the, the damage that the doing the cheapy oil changes is doing to the perception. It is long term unplanned consequences. It's or unintended it, it, it'd consequences. be fine if we were still all working on 96 Corollas. Now, do they do that oil change all the time? Is it only coupon? No, it's based? all the time. See, I don't do that. Well, they no, they run the, the coupons always. The, they send the coupon out, but it's always there. Like you can always just wait for the coupon. You see what I'm saying? Oh, okay. And so they just pump them out there and. See, I only do it. So, yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm in shop fix, but I do. I'm very uh, calculated in how I do things. Specific, um, yeah, yeah. So, the only reason I ever run those discounted specials is to saturate an area to try and pull the clientele to us, so we can show them how we're different than a lot of the shops I, around I, us. Look, I'm not going to lie. I've I've used coupons since I got into the new shop to try and get my car count where it needs to be for the new shop. Coupons, I, I use coupons every single month. The coupons aren't the issue. I feel sleazy. I feel dirty. I feel like I need to. No, no, no. I, use, I use coupons. Every, I send I send mailers out. I just don't do the the twenty four ninety nine oil change. I dis I, I we do is like set discounts, like thirty three bucks off, sixty six bucks off, and seventy seven whatever. The 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 idea is. He come on in. The reason why I don't want to do the, the oil changes. Look, there was a guy that was he has since sold the shopping house like floats on a boat in the Bahamas um with his new young wife. And he uh he he was at one point, he was at one of the ASOC dinners. He was telling mm-hmm. us how he yeah. beats up his oil vendors to get his synthetic oil change to less than two dollars a quart. And then he sells the full synthetic oil change, full synthetic oil change for like 30 bucks. And he advertises it. And if they don't acquiesce to the price he's demanding, because he's buying hundreds of gallons, he just goes to another vendor. And so his customers are getting whatever the hell it is that they happen to have in their vat. I have been on, with the same oil company since I flipped and opened 11 years ago. Same oil company. They have since been bought out by somebody. It was a local Kansas built, uh, uh, company. They've since been bought out. They kept the same formula, but I wanted I wanted consistency. I wanted consistency in the quality. I didn't want to just keep switching vendors up and use whatever I could. I'd seen too many shops do that. I used to be the guy selling the oil and had to like, oh well, if they're selling it for a buck eighty nine a quart, I can do a buck eighty seven a quart if you buy fifteen freaking gallons for. Like right. I used to have to do all that, and they would. The next time you came in there, it was like, well, they were a hundred, they were a dollar thirty nine a quart. That's why I bought giant piles of this like cheap oil. It wouldn't even be API rated to the newest standard. It would be like three or four generations old, and it would say on the bottle, "Do not use on anything later than two thousand ten." Yeah. Right. That's what they bought. That's what they were using in the customers' vehicles. And why? Because they were doing cheapy oil changes. It doesn't. It doesn't make any. You're doing a disservice, and the customers relying on us to be the experts and to give them good advice on vehicles. Now, if you're if you are a leaser, I don't want you as a customer. Yeah. Yeah. If you're leasing the vehicle, I will. Hey, that shop right down the street does twenty nine ninety nine oil changes. Why don't you go down there and talk to them? You're leasing the vehicle. 
I don't care. I'm not going to see you in two years. You're going to trade this sucker in and get something else. But everybody else, like it's, what is a year seven before you get your value out of the vehicle when you buy brand? But by the way, you're going to have to hold in that Rivian for your seven years <laughs> for it, you to get your value out of it. It's like seven years and a hundred and something thousand miles before, before the depreciation and what you've incurred in costs off, is offset by the vehicle. Right. So you should keep it for a long time. And me doing cheapy oil changes with junk oil because I need to make this twenty nine ninety nine oil change work so I can get the car in so I can sell them ball joints is not is doing a disservice to them. It is. I don't disagree. That's my issue with them. Okay. And and they don't care, and I don't blame them. You know why? Because they're driving around in Rivians. And I'm riding a busted 2017 Dodge carrying caravan. <laughs> the the seat leather on my on my handle cracked, and and right on my ass too. That part there, it's all you know, it's all cracked. I don't know if you've noticed this. It's always the big people that come in that their seats are all tore up. Why 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 are you fat shaming? Why? It makes me feel better about myself. Is that what you're it is? skinnier than I am? So I'm not. I'm shorter. Well, you could get a Rivian that kneels so you can get in the car easier. <laughs> you can just roll in, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, he's, he's got a Dodge Challenger. I got to fall into the Dodge Challenger. But here's the they need to put fat guy handles in there. I hate getting in and out of those cars just yeah. anyways. <laughs> yeah. They need a fat guy handle for, for when I swing in. I need something to hold on to. There is nothing. There's one in my van. Man, it makes me think of Brian Pollock in the back of that Pathfinder. And he where, didn't ride in the back. Where were we? In in New Mexico. So we're we're going around this corner. He he did ride in the back at one point. Yeah, he's because a big boy, have you ever met Brian Pollock? He's a big boy. He's enormous. It, it, he's yeah. like all three of us put together. You know, he's a big boy. and we're going around a corner. And Brian's got a hold of the old shit handle in the back of this Pathfinder, and it's popping and it's cracking. And everybody in the back is beginning to move over towards the door, and Brian is like literally apologizing, saying, "I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry." <laughs> that was when you were telling um, Dutch that it was white dirt on top of the mountain, and that it. What, what were you trying to tell him? It wasn't a glip. It was, glob. It was a ref- <laughs> was, you were trying was the to glip t- clop, yeah, glip clop, logical fallacy. Yeah, but it's what like was it you were calling it? No, that's what I. No, it's it's what is a gish gallop or whatever. See, see, there, there you go. I was the only one who just doesn't know what the hell they're saying. <sighs> All right. Yeah, gish gallop. That's what it is. <laughs> 